I was so shocked. I wanted to speak to someone, so I launched into this spiel at Professor Moritz, the musician who kept the lodgings upstairs. And his reaction, I will never forget, this extraordinary phrase he came out with. Still, sprich durch die Blume. Shh, speak through a flower. I didn't know what he meant. And then it dawned on me. Speak through a flower. Say only good things. Don't criticize. If you must talk of the Führer, then it must be because you wish to praise him. Or else do not speak at all. He blocked up the keyhole with putty. He stuffed a pillow along the base of the door. He pulled out the cables of the telephone. These days in Germany, you cannot be too careful. And I think it was only then that I realized how terrified some people were. Let me tell you a story. Maybe you'll learn more what it feels like to live in this Germany now. Another week I go to a shop, say to the shopkeeper, I was business. <laughs> A small talk. Stupid thing to say. His wife goes, business. <laughs> it's bad. It's non-existent. We don't notice, but another customer's come in. Yesterday I go back to the shop, I say to the shopkeeper, how's your wife? He says, they've taken her away for re-education. Somebody heard her grumbling. She said business was bad, so they turned her in. Maybe he thought it was me. In Germany these days, you trust no one. Those that didn't fit in in Hitler's Germany had reason to fear. The Nazis allowed no opposition. Political parties that once had stood against them were banned. Their leaders left the country or stayed to face harassment or arrest. It was all legal, but only because Hitler, now, was the law. We Nazis have conquered Germany, but to restore this country completely, we need discipline and we need order. So I will deal ruthlessly with anyone who would stop me. I won't have ignorant, misled, insignificant people shot, but those really responsible will in all cases be crushed to earth. In March 33, the first concentration camps appeared. Brutal prisons run by Heinrich Himmler's black-shirted SS. Here, German citizens were sent for any act of political opposition. Maybe just writing an anti-Nazi slogan on a wall, or keeping a banned book, or telling a joke at the expense of some party official. The secret police, the notorious Gestapo, carried out the arrests. And working hand in hand with them, the tens of thousands of ordinary Germans committed or just spiteful enough to tell on their neighbors. You don't dare say anything out loud against the Nazis. Say in a streetcar, you don't give your opinion to anyone you don't know. You never do anything that's forbidden. If people say Heil Hitler, you say Heil Hitler. I knew of people who turned in their neighbors. I knew of people who turned in their neighbors convinced they were doing the right thing. It's a system. Everyone's stuck in the Nazi web. It's quite devilish because no one trusts one another. In 1941, in the war, I was in hospital. In the bed beside me, there was a mother with a newborn baby. And foolishly, she said, more cannon fodder. She never even made it home. They arrested her in the hospital. From Professor Moritz, Nora learned the darker side of recent German history. How German Jews were being victimized. How trade unions had been banned. How, despite the boom in the economy, with no one to argue their case, workers' take-home pay had fallen how the professions were being stripped of non-Nazis 
civil servants, doctors, teachers, judges, losing their jobs unless they towed the Nazi line. Many refused. One such was Professor Moritz himself. Oh, I thought you knew. He's not allowed to give lectures anymore. He has a few private students, that's all. He never told me. Yes, well. And day by day, his private students desert him. Well, he should have retired long ago. And he's got money. He can still pay the rent. But he was one of the best. Why would they sack him? It isn't usual to question acts of government here. It's close to treason. But didn't anyone protest? His friends at the university? They organized a petition. They took it to the ministry, where they were told that presenting a petition was a serious act. At which point all but two had the sense to leave. And the two that stayed? They were beaten senseless. One was a fine organist at one of our biggest churches. I've heard that his hands are ruined. So much for my cheerful, festive Germany. It made me so angry. I remember standing there on the stairwell, my hand clutching the banister, and I just wanted to scream at her. Stop it! Stop it! Stop the broadcasts, halt the parades, tear down the banners all red like blood, stop the chanting, and please, please treat this insane man who thinks he's Fuhrer in some asylum somewhere. But she just fixed me with this infinitely reasonable smile and said, you mustn't judge ours as a bad government. We need to be ruled hard until things are sorted out. We'd have gone communist if the Nazis hadn't saved us. And the Führer is good and fine to all who willingly obey. And he knows that we must be united in order to regain our place among the strong nations of the world. To regain our place among the strong nations of the world, Hitler's seductive promise. The Versailles Treaty had left Germany weak. If Germany rearmed, the Allies could invade. Hitler had called their bluff. He'd pulled out of disarmament talks. He'd brought back army training for all German men. And in 36, he'd marched into the Rhineland, a buffer with France where no German troops had been allowed since 1919. The Gazette presents the first actual pictures to reach this country of the German troop movements, which have caused the biggest political sensation of recent times. Where does it all lead? To a new war? or to assure our peace. Hitler talked of peace often. It wasn't a contradiction. He said he was arming Germany not for war, but defense. Like the hedgehog, Germany would be secure but threaten no one. Many European leaders found this reasonable. Ambassadors were sent to shake Hitler's hand. Meanwhile, Germany stockpiled arms, built submarine bases, and trained bombers in secret in Russia and Spain. He wants war. Why can't they see that? He thinks 1918 is unfinished business. It's so childish. It would be laughable if it weren't so tragic. And are there many who think like you? No. I think most would cheer him all the way. But I'll tell you something. Each time he takes a gamble, announcing national service, marching into the Rhineland, beforehand, each time, there were arrests, pacifists and so on, taken to the camps. Everyone knows someone who knows someone who's disappeared. Just a little terror. But would they do this if they truly believed we all supported them? But Hitler did have the support of the great majority. Maybe not for war, not at first. But Hitler convinced the German people war would make Germany strong. And after so many humiliations, 
he'd fed a deep desire for revenge. By 1938, the year Nora Wall left for England, Germany was on a war footing. They say that their army is the most powerful ever seen. I don't think they're bragging. When Germans do something, they do it well. They have a million men trained to fight, more in reserve, and every resource in Germany at their disposal. Arms factories, shipyards working day and night, miners on 14-hour shifts. They're cutting down the park railings, rationing the butter, whipped cream, white bread, personal freedom sacrificed. So, Nora, <laughs> Nora. Frost, Frost. Frost. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go on then, one more, why not? You can just tell me how good Germany is. <laughs> well, I'd have a good journey. It's been, it's been great having you here. You've been lovely. It's been <laughs> really, really lovely having you. Thank you. <laughs> to Nora, Nora, a wonderful guest. <laughs> oh. mm. To Hitler. <sighs> the day that I left, it was the Fuhrer's birthday. April 20th, 1938. Parades in every town. Just like the day I arrived, flags, cheering crowds. But this time, too, tanks and armored trucks. I was a bit the worse for wear. The night before, they had sent me off, Eric and Ursula, toasting me, toasting Germany, toasting Hitler. I stayed very quiet. I don't think they noticed. It's as if the whole working strength of every man, woman and child is power concentrated in the Fuhrer's fist. And with that, he carves our future. How a people forces its way upwards is unimportant. But the goal, the goal is magnificent. And you know, I don't think it was the drink that made their faces glow with such radiance. 